There is an interesting way in which the fall of the Howards in 1546 is particularly useful to us in the project in terms of the evidence that it threw up, because it, it emerges that two of the key pieces of evidence about the construction of the tombs, about their original appearance and about their location at Thetford, and possibly about how they were moved from Thetford to Framlingham, come out of documents generated by the Howards' fall from power. The first one is a description of Thetford Priory and the tombs that were uh, to be seen there in 1546. And this was created because uh, the evidence against the Earl of Surrey, the evidence that he committed treason against Henry VIII, revolved in part around uh, the coat of arms that he had started using, a coat of arms which, because it showed his family's descent from uh, the English royal house, uh, and because it showed uh, some kind of uh, kinship with Edward the Confessor, the great Anglo-Saxon royal saint, uh, seemed to be claiming that the Howards had some kind of uh, right to the throne, which of course when Henry VIII knew that he was about to die leaving a young son to succeed him, made him perhaps understandably nervous. So royal commissioners were sent around to look at the heraldry that the Howards had been using. And one of the places that they went was Thetford Priory to look at the tombs uh, that the Howards had been building, but also the other tombs that were in place there. So we have a report written by those royal commissioners describing what they saw at Thetford. Uh, the great thing is that it's quite detailed, it describes a lot of the heraldry in detail. The difficult thing is that it's quite damaged and so there are parts of the document we can't read. There are parts where we have to speculate really in trying to reconstruct what it was the commissioners wrote, let alone what they saw at Thetford in the first place. Nonetheless, it's really invaluable evidence in trying to work out where those tombs were and what they were like when they were first commissioned and built. And then the second piece of evidence also springs out of the same process because when the Earl of Surrey and the Duke of Norfolk were convicted of treason, all their goods were confiscated. And Henry VIII's government was quite a bureaucratic government. It listed all the goods it had confiscated. So we have quite full lists of the possessions of the Howards dating from 1546. And those lists include some things that may be relevant to the tomb, in particular some stone, some freestone as it was called, so uh, stone work by masons, uh, which was uh, for a tomb. It doesn't say which tomb, um, so we can't really tell what its relationship is with the tombs, either as originally constructed in Thetford or as later reconstructed uh, at Framlingham. But it still shows us that building commemorative monuments was something that the Howards were actively engaged in at the time of their fall, and possibly that things were in the middle of being moved from Thetford to Framlingham and were in their possession in 1546. I say possibly because that's a leap of conjecture and it's the kind of thing that if we find another piece of evidence that tilts our interpretation in one way or another might then cause us to rethink the significance of the freestone for a tomb that's there in the Duke of Norfolk's inventory.